Well, 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 isn't this an interesting week four of NFL primetime? Chris Berman along with Booger McFarlane. We, yeah, there is Armageddon in New England. We, we heard that <laughs> we, we heard the Bucks and Patriots are playing in New England. But what a great slate all the way around. Outstanding slate leading up to the main course tonight in Foxborough. Well, that's the main course. But listen, starting October, right at the start of October, Cincinnati, first place. Raiders, Denver, first place. Carolina, first place. Arizona, first place. Seattle, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, mm. last place. So that's the backdrop as we get going with the last place Chiefs. Mm. Yeah, they're going into Philadelphia. Have they not lost three to under to Patrick Mahomes? No, they have not. Andy Reid, of course, 140 wins in Philadelphia, trying to win his 100th as the Chief. The brothers Kelsey, he drafted them both. Travis and, of course, Jason Center for the Eagles playing against each other. What? Now, you know, Patrick Mahomes always liked Jenny Finch, the way she pitched softball. Underhand. There's not many quarterbacks can do that. The poise, more or less, the confidence to do that in the middle of a game, boom. Plus, he's resting his arm. It's Absolutely. really good strategy. 7-3 Chiefs. Jalen Hurts. He can move, and he finds the rookie, Kenneth Gainwell, and he gains very well. Enough for a first down. Gain at 12. A few plays later, second and goal. Hurts. Very nice. Dallas Gowder. He had a big game. And it's 10-7, E-A-G-L-E-S. Yeah, nice throw by Jalen Hurts. He continues to play good football. Second quarter, Mahomes looking to throw. Wait a minute, that's overhand. Yeah, well, he has Tyree Kill, so why wouldn't you want to throw it over there? It's called a perfect pass. You ever heard of hitting him in stride? Boom. That's what they mean right there. Very nice gain of 32. Now, Mahomes. And, yeah, that's kind of three-quarter on the hill. Touchdown, 14-10, to 10, Kansas City. Eagles trying to answer. A lot of action in this game. Hurts rolling. Third and goal. Looking for Quez Watkins. Now, uh, forget it. He's on the ground. Why? Yeah, why? Because he got pushed out of bounds, boom. And you know what? Probably a really good call there. Jarius Sneed did it. They settled for a field goal there. Travis Kelsey confused the Chiefs that, wait a minute, what's going on? Travis Kelsey, no! It's over to Jody Fortson, and there's another little, another little scoop pass. Those tricky Chiefs. Tricky <laughs> Chiefs. You knew they would open the playbook here. And on fourth and goal, Hurts to Zach Hurts. Touchdown, but pass interference called a pick play. You like the call? I love the call. Nice little pick play. You got to at least look like you're running a route if you're 19. He kind of pushed up. And the head coach, Nick Sirianni, let's just say he's not exchanging pleasantries. Well, he shaved, though. They should have gotten the call. <laughs> At any rate, Darrell Williams, one of the many Williamses that Andy's always had. One yard run, the Chiefs lead 28-16, now fourth quarter. 28-23, Eagles within five. Mahomes flushed. And why is it that he, he, I mean, you can't even hit me. Like, he just kind of slides out. Now later in the drive, Mahomes, Hill, touchdown, and then, what? The Roadrunner does the backflip. He caught 11 for 186. Love that. I haven't done one of those since 1995, Boom. Well, there's a good reason. And Andy Reid has won 100 games in Kansas City. He's won 140 with Philadelphia. No coach has ever won 100 games with two different franchises. So Kansas City gets off the schneid by scoring 42. Philly bounced back nicely, but they were playing uphill all game. And by the way, no punts in this game. Only the fourth game ever with no punts. Andy Reid afterward. I mean, the people here have been phenomenal since I got here. I, they, my room was loaded with food. Um, so it was, uh, it was good to have a cheesesteak and, <clears throat> and, and a lot of other things. So um, it, it's, it's good to be back and then doing that here. We, we were due to get them that win. It had been a couple weeks now, but I'm glad we got to do it in Philadelphia and, and around where he kind of he kind of came into his own, and now he's in the Kansas City, and it's a good thing he's here with us. Well, uh, look, the, the, the Chiefs won it, and congratulations to Coach Reed, and great to see him feeling well. Yes, he told yes, everybody absolutely. After a day that he was back to work and he was feeling good, and, yes. and he certainly didn't show any ill effects, and it was kind of a warm yeah. day in the Northeast, actually. The Chiefs didn't clean it all up. But they weren't behind by double digits to start with, and they didn't turn the ball over four times. And 
Hello, 42 points, Booger. Yeah, it, it looked better, but there's still things to clean up. First of all, the good. Their offense, anytime their offense gets that many possessions and they don't turn the football over, they're going to score 40 plus points. The bad thing, their defense. They gave up almost 500 yards to an Eagles offense that looked very inept on Monday mm -hmm. night. So mm -hmm. if you're Andy Reid and you have championship aspirations, which we know they do, you got to clean the defense up. It's tackling. It's the ability to make stops, the simple things. You can't bust coverages. So while things are better, they're not yet where they need to be. Uh, and really for the Eagles, the Hurts, Smith, the rookie, they, they hooked. They're okay. They're, again, they're coming, but good effort after Correct. being embarrassed on exactly. Monday night yes. uh, yes. against their rival. So, you know, we had a graphic on this show last week that since 2017, the Giants and the Jets were 18 and 49, by far and away the worst. Yes. They called it Start Spreading the Snooze. But you know what? If We're in October. If you're willing to go five quarters, maybe good things can happen for both of you. Here you go. The Giants are at the Saints. And you figure, look, the Saints have been nomads. This is the last home opener because of the hurricane and everything. So the Saints, the place is going to be raucous. They had a fire on the roof, everything else. So you figure the Saints, this, you know, the Giants are coming in. This would be easy. Daniel Jones says not so fast. John Ross, between two defenders. But wait a minute, it's a fumble. What? He gets it. He scored twice, but they reviewed it and said he was over the line before the fumble. Good throw, even better catch. Splitting the safeties in a cover two defense. Nice throw, Daniel Jones. And the Giants lead 7-0 in New Orleans. Sean Payton's offense wasn't going until, fittingly, the very end of the first half where he is so good. Jameis Winston, Juwan Johnson, touchdown. And we're tied at 7 going into the third quarter. Taysom Hill. He's listed as a quarterback. But look at this. And then, and then, and then, and then I'm still standing, and it's in the end zone. It's a touchdown. This is the role that he needs to be in. He may not be your starting quarterback, but there is still a role for him in New Orleans. The ability to line up and punish defenses from the quarterback position. 14 to 7, New Orleans. And they lead 14 10. Taysom Hill again. You want it again? This is, I'm a quarterback, I'm a fullback. And by the way, I'm still standing. And it's 21 to 10 early fourth quarter. And so the Saints are going to march in and the Giants are going to leave with a loss. Wait a minute. Under seven. Saquon Barkley back full time. 54 yards from Daniel Jones at 21-18. They get a two-point conversion to the Giants. Under a minute to go. Third and seven at the Giants, 38. Happy Galladay. Kenny Galladay. 28 yards from Jones. That's a Giants first down. Uh, eventually, Graham. Oh, yes, Gano. 48 <laughs> yards, and we're tied at 21. Now, you want to see a coin flip in which we're fired up that we called the right thing? Look at Jabril Peppers. What the ball? We won the toss. And give it to Daniel Jones. Galladay, 23 yards inside the 10. First and goal at the 6. Saquon Barkley, don't give the Saints the ball. Give us the game ball. Touchdown. Gee, man, you haven't said it all year. They win for Coach Judge. And as shocker, that's why they play the games. They go into New Orleans and win it 27 to 21. Jones throwing for 402. Barkley running and receiving. You know what? The Giants did it. Maybe the Jets could do it. it, it that's a lot. Man. Maybe. I, maybe. Well, they were at home against Tennessee, which is, they can look really good and they can be goofy. I, I don't know what I mean by that, but you know they have Derrick Henry. I mean, he runs for 2,000 yards every year. That's more than what you expect. 22 yards at the goal line. I wonder what they're going to do. Well, Give it to Derrick Henry. You think? This is the really good that you were talking about. <laughs> and they go for a two-point conversion, make it 17-10. After the Jets led for the first time all year late in the third quarter, 10-9, Zach Wilson fumbled. But the Jamison Manhattan clam crowder. Soup for everybody. The poise, the calmness to pick it up, not to panic and throw it down the field. And you know what? I'll have a second bowl. That's nice from the youngster to, to uh, Crowder, and the Jets are tied at 17. Third and six. Titans, 29-yard line. Ryan Tannehill. Jets brought the rush. Would they have seven sacks today? And that's Robert Salas type of defense, finally. Now, nine minutes to go. Wilson. The number two overall pick from BYU, Corey Davis. Hello. Welcome to New York, Corey. That's the type of throw they drafted Zach Wilson for. 24-17, final two minutes of the game. 
Third and ten. Jets pressure again. They brought it all game. Tannehill incomplete. Fourth down. Can the Jets hold? Fourth to ten. Tannehill. Oh, it's incomplete, but a defensive pass interference on Jared Wilson. Yeah, anytime you come over the back and the ball is a little underthrown and Robert Sala is not happy, but they're going to call it. 19 seconds to go, second and goal, Tannehill. Cameron Batson. Oh, the Jets were going to win. We're tied at 24. We go to overtime. And the Jets win the t- New York won both coin tosses. Mm. I think we should make a note of that. Maybe an omen. Yeah, halfway through overtime, Jets third and goal. Wilson going to run it. But he's on the one, and now, no! Did he go after he knocks him out? And so they can't go for it if they want to. They do kick a field goal. It was an interesting one. It was like Pele kicking. A 22-yard field goal. They lead at 27-24. Tannehill, Chester Rogers. Tick, tick, tick. Titans moving. Final seconds. Overtime. Randy Bullock, 49 yards. No good. No good. J-E-T-S. Jet, jet, jet. It's October. They're undefeated in October. The Jets knock off a playoff team, the Titans. So their first win, first win for Robert Sala, and first win for the young quarterback, Zach Wilson. Robert was telling us that after the game, he came up to you and asked if you were having fun yet. So, are you? I am. I am. It's an interesting fun, though. (laughs) I mean, you know, it's a roller coaster game for sure. The emotions, right, up and down. And, you know, needing to come through in, in clutch moments. So I'm, I'm glad we can learn from a win. It's the best way to do it. Well, Jets first real quick. Their defense brought heat. And they, they, I know Tennessee didn't have the big receivers. So right. what? The Jets are over. They brought heat. They played with effort. And these young quarterbacks like Zach Wilson, let's not close a book. Oh, in September, he's no good. It's way too early. going to be any good. And for the Giants, what did you see? When you're – Head coach is a former defensive coordinator. That's the way your defense should play that of yes, the Jets. That's true. When you're the Giants flipping it over, their big players finally stepped up. We saw Kenny Galladay make plays. We saw Kadarius Toney make plays. And the guy drafted number two overall a few years ago, Saquon Barkley. Hello, welcome. Welcome to this season. 19 touches, 126 mm-hmm. yards. So, boom, it's really simple. When the guys you're paying all the money to, when they start to make plays, hey, we can win some ball games. It's really simple for the – and you have to give Daniel Jones credit mm-hmm. because he went on the road in the Superdome. Jameis Winston, that place was going crazy. And he played well and played within himself and got the ball to those playmakers. So the Giants and the Jets get off the schneid. The next question, well, the Jacksonville played Thursday night. Lions. They played hard. Lions? Lions? Did they get off the schneid? Division game at Chicago with Justin Field. Talk about schneid. That's the number of passing yards he had last week. One (laughs) against Cleveland. But meanwhile, they can't even make the exchange. Jared Goff, Lions, into the hands of Bilal Nichols. This is hard to imagine. This is inexcusable. You go over this every day to start every practice for 10 minutes. And the fact that you start a game with it and can't get it done, that's on Dan Campbell. So they were behind 7-0. They were moving, and then there you go. Two plays later, look, it's Fields. Hey, I can throw for more than one yard. That's Darnell Full Moody. He makes the move and then what? Between defenders, 64-yard play. Bears, there you go. Later in the drive, Chicago. David Montgomery, does he run hard or what? Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Nine-yard touchdown. He had two today, 14 nothing. Very good runner, a slasher out of Iowa State, boom. Third quarter now, same score. Play action, field. Cuckoo Kachu. It's Allen Robinson, mm-hmm. 28 yards. Chicago back in Detroit territory. Fields. Talk about a full moody. Whoa, that's beautiful throw and a beautiful catch. First of all, look at the pocket. The pocket was clean, clean pocket. Quarterback made a nice throw and an unbelievable catch there by Mooney. And now the handoff. Matt Nagy, former on the chief staff a while ago, but Damian Williams. Yeah, he was the one that had the huge run in the Super Bowl yes. for Andy. But once the chief and the Bears are rolling 21 to nothing. You gotta, you gotta give Detroit credit. They hang for 60 minutes. Down 24-7. Goff finds Khalif Raymond. That's right, from Holy Cross. That's right, in Little Worcester, Massachusetts. And the Lions trail now by 10. Five minutes ago, fourth and one Detroit. Goff, Bears fan, Soldier Field, trying to help the D. Amonra St. Brown is who he's going to look for. And almost. 
Yeah, and, and that's a throw that Jared Goff has got to make. A nice little route. He's, he's made the DB stop his feet, and St. Brown broke out. You got to put that right between the one and the four, and Goff didn't. Dan Campbell a little upset there at his quarterback. Yep, and so in the end, the Bears, you know, at home twice, they played some good defense. They, they can do that. The field's limited when Montgomery runs like that. It changes the game, of course. Give the young quarterbacks a lead. Let's see what they can do. And everything can settle down. More importantly, boom, he had a clean pocket today. He didn't get sacked nine times like he did against Cleveland. Yeah, it would make a big difference. Speaking of Cleveland, that defense was on full, uh, full uh, not the, the Vikings were on full alert. Full display, I should say, for Cleveland in Minnesota. Dalvin Cook playing Vikings in the middle of a three-game homestand. They've lost two tough games. Beat Seattle last week. This is what he can do very quickly. 11 yards, Minnesota early moving. Kirk Cousins, when he gets warmed up, we know what he can do. He's off to a good statistical start. Oh, what a feeling. Adams dancing on the feeling. 22 yards out at the 18. Third and goal, Cousins. And he, you know, he's moving on up to Justin Jefferson. 7 0 Minnesota, they look good. Not a better combination of receivers in football between Thielen and Jefferson. Kevin Stefanski wants offensive coordinator here. Fourth and goal, Cleveland. They're going to go for Baker Mayfield looking for David Njoku. But oh, so the Vikings hold on four plays, but now they're going to get a new set of down defensive holding. Mm. And when that happens, it's tough. Defense gets tired of being on the two yard line. Yeah, and then they held on first down and second down. This toward the end of the half. Kareem Hunt, that's seven plays. You can't end. I mean, the Vikings kind of shoot themselves in the foot, and I continue with shooting themselves in the foot. They call a timeout because either they didn't like the alignment, they didn't have a guy. They don't have a timeout. Delay of game. Now down to the one, and so what? From the one, we'll go for two, says Stefanski. Why not? Mayfield, Danny Janner. So they could have stopped them on downs, but they're down 8-7. Mistakes at the end of the half. Under two minutes of Minnesota ball, fourth quarter. Cousins, Jefferson are down 14-7. The Vikings defense has held Cleveland in there, but boy, Cleveland's defense just kept coming. Watch. Look out. Kirk, well, that was, you know, what are you going to do? It's on fourth and three. Cleveland takes over on down, but they're not done. A punt. Minnesota ball. Cousins looking. Ball tipped, which they did a couple of times today, Booger. Uh, picked up by Grant Delpit. Wait a minute. Pass interference on Troy Hill. Mm, I'm not sure about that one there, Boom. I can maybe the backhand there on the little tug of the jersey. You got to let them play on fourth down. They didn't. They get the ball. Minnesota, 17 seconds to go, but they need a touchdown. Remember, Cousins, third and 10, 17 seconds. Down the field, dealing, 19 yard tick, 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 tick. Three seconds to go, third and fourth. This is it. Cousins need a miracle. When's that happen in the stadium? <laughs> not, not today. <laughs> All right. The Browns, the defense, boy, they give up a touchdown early, and for three and a half quarters, they pitch a shutout, if you will. And Cleveland is three and one in Minnesota. They, they've been in every game, but they, they're down to one and three. The Cleveland Browns, uh, you know, they're back up with the Bengals in first place at three and one, and we'll see Baltimore in a little while after the game. Baker Mayfield, different sort of win for Cleveland, a low scoring one. Mm hmm. Good enough for us to win when when I'm playing quarterback like that. That's uh, thankful they played like that. I mean, that's a really good offense that's averaging, I think, 30 points a game. So um, for them to play lights out like that, um, we're, we're lucky to have them on our side. And, you know, I need to pick it up because uh, if I think that piss poor performance is going to cut it, it's not. So I'll get better. But uh, luckily, we, we can lean on those guys and uh, and run the ball when we need to. I this defense is for real. I understand all the weapons they have on offense. This defense is open our eyes. For Cleveland, it's really simple. You run the football. You ask your quarterback to make a few throws, and you take advantage of some of the additions you've made on defense. You bring over Jadavion Clowney. You add to the secondary. And now Miles Garrett takes that next step. That defense led by defensive coordinator Joe Woods was dominant. If they have this formula boom, they can play in any stadium, any weather, any time, because it's a formula that will travel. They're hoping to play five months. Yes, they can. They, we, they, we know how good they were last year, and this is not a yes, clipping year for them. Absolutely. They've been through that already. Yes. No, this is now we're actually good yes. if we really work at it. Exactly. They, they're formidable. Meanwhile, Washington won their division last year. Not the greatest of record, but they won it. And we're looking for their defense. They, they've kind of been AWOL a little mm -hmm. bit. Reading, reading the press clippings yeah, a little bit. They're, they're, they're in Atlanta against the Falcons against Matt Ryan. Washington hasn't beaten Atlanta since 03. I know they don't play a lot, but that's odd. 
Cordero Patterson, you talk about a Swiss Army knife, Taysom Hill. This guy was unbelievable. Just a football player, receiver, running back, it doesn't matter. Second touchdown of the first quarter of that of the quarter. He leads 17-13. Atlanta doesn't have. Kickoff. DeAndre Carter. He's got a seam. He could go all the way. Imagine a guy named Carter going all the way in Georgia. I mean, <laughs> it's perfect, right? And Washington missed the point after, but they lead it 19-17. Now Matt Ryan. Patterson. Oh, man, he had three touches. He was great today. Yeah, nice throw there by Matt Ryan. Outside, the DB never locates the football. Patterson does. Easy pitch and catch there. And Falcons lead at 23-22. Fourth and two now. Uh, going for it on fourth and two. Ryan hit by Chase Young, and he throws a moon ball. I mean, it's, it's like a punt at this case, but... Better than a punt for Atlanta because it called Chase Young. Yeah, I disagree with the call because he hit Matt Ryan in the shoulder, which turned his head. It was not a personal foul, or at least it shouldn't have been. And Ron Rivera obviously didn't like it. Third and three, Ryan. Mike Davis, so it gets up. Here they go. And the Falcons lead 30 to 22. And so Chase Young goes, man, I didn't really, at any rate. But they have a young man named Taylor Heineke. He is the six-pack, scrambling. Oh, my goodness, come back for the ball. Terry McLaurin for the touchdown. First of all, great job by Heineke keeping the play alive. And young receivers on underthrown balls always locate the ball because the defenders never do. Nice adjustment there by Scary Terry. So it's four minutes left to do a touchdown. Now 46 seconds to go. Heineke throwing a crawl across the field to J.D. McKissick, former Seahawk. He can move, and he can move way into the end zone. What a leap. Washington leads it 34 to 30. Matt Ryan, last play. Hail Mary. Whoa, it's done. No miracle finish for Atlanta. Ah, they lost another lead. Washington, plucky. You know, they, they, they had Heineke. There's something to it. There's something in those green bottles. I'm telling you. There's something there. They just need that defense, specifically that defensive line, to step up because we haven't seen them yet in 2021. I know Monday night you saw how about them Cowboys, but how about them Panthers? They're 3-0 going into Dallas. Just one of those sneaky good games we were looking forward to watching. Dak Prescott. Panthers don't have McCaffrey, but they had the, the week and a half. Dak on attack. 21 yards. Same drive now, second quarter, 7 7 game. Prescott to Blake Jarwin. They don't, they go for two, they don't get it, they lead 13 7. Great route by Jarwin inside the linebacker. Nice throw by Prescott. You know what people really didn't know because he's running for his life a lot with the Jets is Sam Darnold. He can run. Really good athlete, boom. 14 yards with a scramble. And now Darnold, second and nine from the 11. I'll keep it myself. And I'll, I'll bowl over a Cowboy. Panthers lead 14-13. He's rushed for two touchdowns already. After Panthers miss a field goal, Dallas ball. Prescott. Oh, Amari Cooper, 35 yards, 20-14. to 14. Cowboy. Next time, Carolina, third and seven. You can run, but you cannot hide. Dallas brought pressure again. That defense up front, they were rushing the pass. A bunch of no-name guys, but they got after Sam Donald. Forcing a punt, Cowboys drive. Ezekiel Elliott up mm. the middle, then bounces over here. Semi-stiff arm. It's going to be 47 yards out near the five. He ran for 143 on 20 carries. He knows something. Prescott to Dalton Sergeant Schultz. He knows touchdown. Run the ball, play action, easy throw. Now, Darnold. You know, you can set your watch to it. Trayvon Diggs has an interception every game. He actually had two today. How about that? Four games, four picks. Playing the position better than anybody in the NFL right now. And Prescott to Cedric Wilson. What? That's why he wears number one. It's a slip. 33-14. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of gave it up a little bit. There's number two for Diggs. So five picks. One in every game, at least one. Prescott and the Cowboys, they scored 36 points by passing only 22 times. We told you that the Elliott had a big, big game uh, running the ball. As a matter of fact, it was so big that he hung out with our Edward.
feel like you guys are playing the best football you've played since 2016 when you and Dak were rookies? Um, I think we're playing good football right now. I think we're winning football games, but I want to see us go out there and finish. I want to see us go out there and really blow somebody out. Um, I think in the past couple of weeks, we, we were in a situation where, you know, it could have either, you know, we could kind of let off the gas pedal and still be win comfortably, or we can just go ahead and choke them out. So, I mean, I want to see us go out there and choke guys out. Well, look, you saw Dallas on Monday night yeah. there with, against the Eagles. This was an undefeated team that the Panthers have now lost for the first time. What are they? They, they, they seem to have it going both sides. And maybe the most impressive six-day stretch I've seen in a long time, what they did Monday night against the Eagles, then to come against the Panthers, which their defense was ranked number one in just about every statistical category. But the Cowboys have a winning formula. Offensively, it's really simple, boom. Dak Prescott, we need you to throw the football about 25 times. Yeah. Hey, Zeke and Tony. We're going to let you run it about 30 to 35 times combined. We're going to control the clock, allow our defense to play fast, a defense that's been turned around by defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. The effort, they're flying to the football, the hustle. Trayvon Diggs has been outstanding. Michael Parsons, the defensive rookie of the year to this point, and the effort and the enthusiasm. This Cowboy team, the question mark was about their defense. It's not a question mark anymore. They are playing outstanding. Five sacks a day of Sam Donald. Great job by this Cowboys team. Yeah, and they can go different directions, as you point out. Absolutely, on yes. Because they, they have the weapons outside with, with, with Cooper, C.D. Lamb, uh, Gallup. They can go down the field. But today they just pound you because it's called a winning formula. Complimentary football. We're going to run the ball, play action, and rest our defense and not make them play 60 or 70 plays. And the struggle by Zerline in the first game, the rear view window. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. First game. Yeah, that's it. He's, he's good. Tell you who else is good. The NFC West, man. Loaded. They they are loaded, especially at the top. 3-0 Arizona and 3-0 Rams who knocked Tampa Bay from the ranks of the undefeated last week. Kyler Murray, what does he have up his sleeve? Tell you what, got DeAndre Hopkins up his sleeve and up the field, 25 yards. Now third and six from the Rams, 41. Murray. A.J. Green. A.J. Green. Turning back the hands of time. Boom. Great job of body position, keeping the DB on his back by Green. 7-3, Arizona. Now, Matthew Stafford rolling. Van Jefferson, we got a ball game. Rams lead 10-7. Second quarter, same score. The Cards with the ball. Third and two in L.A. territory. Murray. That's Aaron Donald. I escaped you once. Escaped you here. It's Chase Evans for a first down. Now Murray. Boy, is he seeing the field or what? Max, two X's. Williams, touchdown. Cardinals lead 14-10. Talk about threading a needle, boom. A one-inch by one-inch window. That's what he threw that in. Acquired this year, Sony Michelle, but it's a fumble. Buda Baker recovers, and the Cardinals have forced the second turnover of the day. The Cardinals defense has been outstanding. Nice job there. Stripping the ball, the old peanut punch. Shout out to Chicago. Chicago Bears, peanut team, a great job there. Guards take advantage. Murray, think he can run. What? And let me get past you. And let me get, oh, I'm going to get out of bounds really quickly. It's the first down. Murray, keeping the drive alive. Second to go for the one. James Conner. In the end zone, standing up. Cardinals, they lead it 21 to 10. They lead 24 13 at the half. Now 27-13. More Murray. Oh, the little flip to William. Mm -hmm. Are we going to run a tight end screen? Is that what we're going to do? Goes 25 yards inside the Rams 10. And now third and one, Connor. He actually got knocked over that time, but he still scored a touchdown. 37-20. to 20. My goodness. The... Arizona Cardinals, just, just let this sink in for a minute, go into L.A. after the Rams have knocked off Tampa Bay in such impressive fashion. And they go in and they do it both sides of the ball. We'll talk about this whole division in a moment. Their first 4-0 start since 2012. Seahawks, who started the day in the basement at San Francisco. Now, by the way, it's Coach McVay had always used to beat Arizona. In San Francisco, Russell Wilson's had the upper hand on, on the 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo. Ross Dwelly says, we know all that. We're leading 7-0. Yeah, really good throw there by Jimmy G. Get pressure in his face. Nice throw. Right, what a day in San Francisco. The Giants winning the NL West with their 107. The Niners trying to beat the Seahawks. But Wilson, the DK Metcalf, 
Hits 28 yards in the second quarter. After the two-minute warning, Wilson, Metcalf, he's in. We're tied at seven. Scoring in the first half, not a problem for Seattle. It has been in the second half. Jimmy G, sideline, calf injury, Trey Lance in. First pass. On a second drive, grounder to George Kittle. Later, yeah, it's behind Debo Samuel, three and out. So Seattle, let's go here. They're saying, let's get a lead. Let's get some points in the second half. Wilson, you know what? I'm going to do it myself. In the end zone, 14-7 Seahawks. Still one of the more underrated players in our league, Boom. As much as he's accomplished. Exactly. Huh? After a Niners fumble, Wilson. He fumbled the kickoff. Touchdown to Freddie Swain. Just like that, 14 points. Just like that, 21-7. As a defender, when you're coming against Russell Wilson, attack the upfield shoulder. If you don't, he'll spin out and he'll gut you with plays like that. But just when you think that Lance can't do it at all, when you see coverage like this, or <laughs> you salivate. Lance, the Debo Samuel. Debo. Whoa. He's gone. I think he was over. Outstanding play designed by Kyle Shanahan. A wheel route behind the goal route. Wide open right there by Debo Samuels and blown coverage by the Seattle Seahawks. That was Jamal Adams saying, really? What, what were we doing? 21-13. Seahawks, third and 10. Russell. Oh, it complete the Tyler Lockett, but there's a flag on Dre Kirkpatrick. Yeah, anytime there's a receiver running downfield, you can't even breathe on him. So that will set up, not Carson, but Alex Collins. He runs hard, too, make no mistake. Yeah, it's like it's contagious up there. Yeah, it is. And the Seahawks go on to win in San Francisco, which they've done a lot of. San Francisco's had better success up the road. And so Seattle, they get out of the basement. They and the Niners, well, they're still in the basement, but they get to 500. They and the Niners are 2-2. Two two. Seattle winning 28-21. to 21. So this division, the big picture in these next well, we've had the one game, and now Thursday, the Rams are at Seattle. And then Sunday, San Francisco plays Arizona. So we're going to learn a lot about it. What we see from Seattle and then the Cardinals, whoa. Gutsy win by Seattle. The first five drives of the game, their offense went three and out. But then when they smelled blood in the water, they saw Jimmy G hurt. Trey Lance came in, rookie quarterback, inaccurate. Then they clamped down. And Russell Wilson was outstanding and made, made plays. But to flip it over to the Arizona Cardinals, boom, the physicality with – they played with today was outstanding running the football almost 200 yards rushing Kyler Murray has playing the, is playing the quarterback position better than just about anyone in their defense you bring over J.J. Watt you got Chandler Jones you got Buda Baker they have players outstanding performance they made a statement today them being the Arizona Cardinals to go into so far to take on the Rams and to beat them as physically as, as they did that was a statement. And no way Rams are looking. I mean, they're both 3-0. and oh. Exactly. I, I get it. I division mean, opponents. Arizona. So this is four to the post in this division. Yes. This is this yes. is not the – I mean, obviously the AFC North, but this division, yikes. Yes. Meanwhile, a little bit, little bit of history here because once upon a time, there was the Ravens playing in Denver. It was 2012. The Ravens were huge underdogs against the Broncos. And one of the best passes you will ever see – in the division round was from Joe Flacco to Jones. It was called the Rocky Mountain Rainbow. And we set that up because nine years later, they're back in mile high. Ravens in Denver. And this one, Jacoby Jones and a young kicker named Justin Tucker, who was a rookie, kicked the winner in double overtime. Well, now he's in the record books. What could he do in mile high after <laughs> kicking a 66-yarder in Detroit? Meanwhile... So uh, Denver's the undefeated team. Javante Williams sheds a few tackles. Dragon, Marlon Humphrey for 31 yards. My goodness, Denver. One of the better rookies in the NFL. Boom, just the physicality that he runs with. I just love how tough the knee drive. He'll fit right in there in head coach Vic Fangio's run game. Second quarter, like we said, 3-0. Denver 2-1 Baltimore. Teddy Bridgewater. He'll throw it to Noah Fant and the Broncos. Leads 7 0. It's been since Tommy Jackson's Broncos in 1977, allowing points at a less of a, of a rate than they have thus far. Latavius Murray, though, 
You know what? He was on the sidelines. Ravens lose running backs. He knows what he's doing. They call him up. He's on the team, and he scores at seven all. Jackson. And not quite the market, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, what am I said, the Rocky Mountain Rainbow, but Hollywood makes the catch in a mile high climate. Out, outstanding route there by Hollywood Brown. And guess what, Boom? He caught it finally. He caught it. <laughs> well, it's altitude, you know? 14 <laughs> 7 book. Now, just before half, oh, Teddy Bridgewater got hit hard. Concussion had to leave. Yeah, and, and, and that's the type of hits that the officials should flag, and we don't want in our league head to head on the quarterback. So Teddy out, Drew Lock in. Denver's down 17 7. Matapique, Justin Matapique brings Lock down. And with a lead, you know, the Ravens, they love Wake Martin, they all know the company. Mm-hmm. They like to play defense like this. Meanwhile, Lamar Jackson, James Proch, pick up the first. Ravens. Run down the clock. Kind of a methodical Baltimore win. Admittedly, the, the plot was changed after Bridgewater went out, but Denver loses for the first time this year, and Baltimore plays its first game in which John Harbaugh's heart rate could stay normal at the end of the game. Baltimore played well. Denver's chances really went out the window when Teddy Bridgewater got hurt. Drew Locke coming in just really couldn't move the offense. And for the 43rd straight game, the Ravens ran for 100 yards. Tying the Steelers of 74 to 77. That is an accomplishment. Did we say the Steelers? Well, the Steelers and the Packers. You talk about two vaunted franchises, the team of the 60s and the team of the 70s. But in this century, unless Tom Brady's playing, you cannot get a matchup with more than three Super Bowl wins among quarterbacks. And that would be Aaron Rodgers and Ben Roethlisberger, which we had today at Lambeau Field because... They haven't played since Super Bowl 45 in Dallas. That was 11 years ago. You would, and Aaron had three that day, and Ben had two. There was a pick six involved, too. But the Packers and Rodgers won, of course, Super Bowl uh, 45 against the Pittsburgh Steelers and Coach Mike Tomlin. So now here we are at Lambeau, dripping in history. Big Ben, Aaron Rodgers. A little older, a little wiser. A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> and Ben? Yeah, I can still do this. Oh, that's Deontay Johnson. How good is that? Yeah, probably should have been offensive pass in the field. I wanted a better cornerback, Jair Alexander. But way to step up if you're being and make a nice throw. 400th passing touchdown of his career. Way to go, Ben. 7 nothing. Stillers. Now, second quarter. Rodgers. Randall Cobb. First down. A couple plays later, second and goal. I mean, he's, he doesn't look older to me. He may be wiser. He doesn't look Aaron. Can do that? Touchdown. Packer fans are wondering, where was that in the NFC title game? Well, Big Ben and the Steelers trying to get to work. Kingsley Kiki makes the play. Ken Clark recovers the football. Cobb. He's going to get open for Aaron. Oh, oh, how nice was that? For the go-ahead touchdown, 14-10 Green Bay. Cobb on a safety mismatch. Mason Crosby, here all last week, blocked by Minka Fitzpatrick. Not only does he pick off balls, he could go all the way. He picks it up. Steelers defense celebrate. Wait a minute, the special teams. Oh, no, they're offside? Yeah, this is what we call a dead get-off boom to the naked eye. It looks like he's offside. But when the ball starts to oscillate and move, we go as a defender. Bad call. Ah, well, that was huge. That was a huge play. Third quarter now. Green Bay up 20 to 10. A.J. Dillon, the powerful back from Boston College. 25-yard gain down to the one. Rodgers rolling right. Yep. How does he get that? He always does it when he has like two yards to throw the ball. His 420th touchdown pass, tying him for sixth all time with Dan Marino. That was Cobb. Now Big Ben. Now G. Harris. Hit immediately by Alexander. Packers defense. He stays on the ground. Carted off, would not return. They, they can't afford that. No, they can't. Big Ben, down 10. What can Mike Tomlin and company conjure up at Lambeau? 
Not a lot. Double coverage, Eric Stokes, rookie, makes the pick. And Green Bay, after that thud in the opening game, comes on to beat the Steelers convincingly. Now Pittsburgh at 1-3 and three in a division where everybody else is 3-1. and one. And Green Bay rolling, and again, it dip- doesn't always have to be, hey, I mean, of course, the win at San Francisco last week was unbelievable. This one was, I don't want to say methodical, but they did all the things defense came, and Aaron Rodgers, it's not 400 yards all the time. It's little tight passes. Yeah, this was a solid performance from the Packers. Yep. Defense, offense, special teams. Aaron Rodgers looked really outstanding. And, and boom, this is what you expect from them. As, as far as the Pittsburgh Steelers, I, I think this is what we can expect from them also. Mm. The offensive line still isn't good. And if you look at Ben Roethlisberger, other than the one throw with that Deontay Johnson pushed off against Jair Alexander, their offense couldn't move. This offense is going to struggle all season long, I'm sad to say. Well, Pittsburgh's one win was in Buffalo, yes. and that was impressive at the time. The Buffalo, though, since then has pinned their ears back and roared. Here's Houston on a rainy day in Buffalo. Doesn't bother the Bills. And the youngster from Stanford, Davis Mills, is... In trouble already, that's Tremaine Edmonds, the large linebacker, one of four picks on the day by the Bills. So, fourth and short of midfield, what do you do? Bills go, it's it's designed for Josh Allen, and it goes 16 yards. Should have been a quarterback sneak, but real good improvisation there by Josh Allen. Now on third and two, same drive. Allen, no, I'm not going to throw it there. Dawson Knox, hard Knox. Into the end zone for the tight end, 25 yards, Buffalo. Single hand pump fake, boom. You can do that when your hands are huge. Notice he never puts the other hand on the ball. Nice throw there. Great play by Josh Allen. Now it's 13-0, Buffalo second quarter. Texans first and 25. What do you think is going to happen? After a penalty, oh, ball is tipped. Into the hands of Micah Hyde. He's always Johnny on the spot. And passing yards for Houston in the first half, minus 23. That's not good. No. 16 nothing Buffalo at the half. Now another field goal by Bass. 19 nothing. Good day for Bass fishing. Allen <laughs> stepping up. <laughs> Stefan Dick. Ah, oh, it's perfect. Just a beautiful throw. They call it dropping it in the bucket. It comes out of the sky like a butterfly with sore feet, boom. Ooh. <laughs> and Allen, well, that's kind of like an easy butterfly toss to knock <laughs> for his second touchdown. They had four field goals. The Bills back in the end zone. And they win 40 to nothing. So I understand it's Houston. Look, it's the NFL. Yes. I understand it's Houston. Buffalo has now thrown two shutouts in the four weeks. They pitched a shutout in five of the eight quarters. And in the last three weeks, they've scored 118 points. Colts, Dalvin. The Colts going to start 0-4? Mm, doesn't sound like the Colts, does it? No. Miami, hot. Carson Wentz playing on only one bad ankle. Jonathan Taylor has two good ankles. 23-yard touchdown, Indy. This is what you expect behind a really good offensive line, minus Quinn Nelson. Look at that hole. Boom, you could have ran through that hole. I, well, maybe that run kind of tiptoed through. 7-3, <laughs> Indy. <laughs> Third quarter now, Wentz says, you know, I, it's Jonathan Taylor. This this, this running game is, is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Whoa, look at that move. Taylor. He takes it to the Taylor. I'll take it out a little bit. 38 yards. Wentz rolling open. Mo Ali Cox had some tough catches in this game. Colts lead 14-3. Fourth quarter, Jacoby Brissett. In trouble a lot of the day. Didn't throw forcefully. Oh, you're not going to throw forcefully here. Being chased. Oh, oh, oh. Drops it. Grover Stewart forces it. Darius Leonard picks it up. Jacoby, no, I'm, I'm good. I, I, I'm just annoyed. I, I'm good. Really good job by the coach defense. Defensive coordinator Matt Eberflus plays a lot of zone coverage. Tight windows to throw the football in. And that front four got after Kobe all day long. Yeah, they did the kick a field goal 20 to 3 later in the fourth. Here's Wentz to Ali Cox again. Got him. That's a tough catch and a throw in a perfect place. Absolutely good chemistry there. Nice to see Wentz looking like himself again. Yeah, I thought Wentz threw the ball very well. Yes. And he knows that no time for a pity party. We were 0 3. We had to win the game, which they did. Colts 27, Miami 17.
You know, it's now four games into the season, Boog, and we don't think we know everything, but we, we, we start to get a feel, a sample size. And we've said it during the show, that NFC West loaded, that Arizona's on top of those three teams, the way they're playing, both sides of the ball, quarterback, uh, speaks for himself, defense, hello. It's about physicality. On the defensive side of the football, they brought over J.J. Watt to go with Chandler Jones. They're dominating the line of scrimmage. Defensive coordinator Vance Joseph doing an outstanding job. On the offensive side, they're running the football. Almost mm. 200 yards against mm. the Rams dominated the line of scrimmage. And Kyler Murray is playing the position at a really, really high level. And then, boom, the Dallas Cowboys. The, what they did in the last seven days against the Eagles and the Panthers, the formula, run the football, Dak, limit your throws to about 20, 25, and we're going to play really, really sound defense under defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. Two really good performances on this Sunday. I know we gave some numbers on Buffalo, which, you know, is pretty impressive uh, their, yes. their last three weeks. A loss is never a good thing, but I was up there in late August. I think it'd be 16 and 1, 15 and 2. There's not the team talking, but right. they lost week one, so that all quieted down. <laughs> it was, I think it helped them. And another note on Cleveland's defense, which we didn't get in before. I know for many of the years since they came back in the league in 99, they were not the best, all right? right? But this is the first time in back to back games they've allowed single digits uh, on defense um, since that time. So, uh, again, Things in another tough division, poor 10 well for the Browns. Now, Tom Brady used to play in New England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. He was back. He plays with Tampa now? Yeah. Okay. That's right. They won the Super Bowl last year, I'm remembering now. And Bill Belichick still coaches in New England. They won six together, right? Yeah. And they're going to play, or they were going to play in Foxborough. Actually, it's true. Uh, Armageddon, here's Scott Van Pelt. Not quite Armageddon boom, but it felt like a New England game with Tom Brady. Rainy, big lights, big moment, and this time he was wearing a Buccaneers uniform. Odd, certainly, and certainly for their fans, Robert Kraft, their owner, a warm greeting. And then when Brady and the Buccaneers took to the field, not to compete, but just to walk out, here's how it sounded. Please welcome tonight's visitors, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As it should be. Thanks for the memories. When he came out and the game started with his folks watching from the Buccaneers suite, he was booed, as he should be. He's not wearing the right jersey anymore. As for the game, it's scoreless. It was a bit of bookkeeping to keep track of as Brady was going to pass Drew Brees, who was in the building for the NBC broadcast. And when Brady hits Mike Evans once and then twice, he becomes the NFL's all time passing yards leader. And they would recognize the moment there on the Jumbotron and Breeze, good friends, obviously with a peer. I don't know if he got one of those little laminated things that Breeze got, which is still one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Here you go. Here's my kid made this. Bucks trailed seven to six at the half. They trailed 14, 13 in the fourth. And look at Brady on third and six, showing the wheels to get a first down. His face says it all. What am I doing? Third and goal. They say move him off the spot. Well. Patriots did that. He rolls a couple of Buccaneers in the area, but a couple of Patriots too. They settle for a field goal, take a 16-14 lead. Mac Jones is pretty good throwing it, but they got tricky here. Hand to Damian Harris, who gives to Jacoby Myers, and what a pass to Nelson Aguilar down the sidelines. Jacoby Myers, of course, was a quarterback in his college days. The Patriots too would have to settle. Patriots too would settle for a field goal. They led 17-16. Now here comes Brady and the Buccaneers. Antonio Brown, first down. Antonio Brown, touchdown. That's what Brady was thinking. Passes on the money, but Brown lost it. Couldn't, I couldn't locate the football. It almost worked once, and it almost worked twice. Brown on his fingertips, but at this point, it's pouring, and he can't hang on to the football. Once again, a field goal to take the lead. Ryan Suckup, just inside the upright good Buccaneers lead what can Mac Jones do again elements as they so often seem to be a factor in these night games in New England man that's a gigantic play from Levante David who bats down a pass that would have been complete for significant gain to Jacoby Myers they have to settle for a 56 yard attempt from Nick Folk it would have barely been good it had the distance but it hits the upright Bill Belichick's expression says it all. 
you can read lips, you know what he's saying. Afterwards, a brief embrace, some thoughts. Brady said he and Coach Belichick caught up in the locker room, said it was private conversation, and frankly, that's, that's how it ought to be. Brady and the Buccaneers, as Bruce Arians said, Brady didn't even win this game, we did. And that is true. But Brady kind of did as well, and they moved to 3-1. and one. Patriots fall to 1-3. and three. The good news for Bill in New England, they take on a Texans team that really struggled on Sunday. Next up for Brady and the Bucks, a visit from the Dolphins. I think the Los Angeles Chargers were already the talk of the NFL after winning in Kansas City, and you can hear the hype train coming. Man, the Chargers and Justin Herbert, they really look good. At home, they welcome the undefeated Raiders to town of that number one passing offense. Weird night, weather delay, some 35 minutes in a dome, a weather delay. And then it was Herbert. End zone, touchdown, Donald Parham. He's got so many big targets. Yeah, they came out first drive of the game, and they continued the electricity from outside the stadium to inside the stadium. Oh, I see what you did there. Bolt up. You know, he continued to hit the tight ends and work the seams, the stress area of the bonded cover three. And here, oh, look, that is just a pretty pass. Money. Austin Eckler, who he himself had a big time night along with Justin Herbert. And at this point, quite frankly, we're thinking this game is over. It's 21 nothing. but the Raiders come out. Opening possession of the second half. It's Carter Hunter Renfro. It's 21-7. Play some defense. Get all the way down inside the five. We're looking for Darren Waller. Where's he been all game? There he is in the end zone. And, and just like that, it's a one score game. It's 21-14. Well, the Chargers able to, to grind it out on the ground. Austin Eckler going over 100 yards, 15 carries, a buck 17. That, that kind of sealed it that in. That was the drive of the game for the Chargers. It wasn't flashy. It was all meat and potatoes, but they, uh, they made it on the ground, and then Derwin James seals it. But to me, in the second half of this game, the offensive line took over, Austin Eckler on the ground, and Justin Herbert benefited from that. All right, so what we learn, uh, you take the Chargers. What we learn about the Chargers, and I'll ask you about the Raiders in a second. Yeah, my biggest question about the Chargers coming in was how are they going to deal with success? Yeah. You know, after what they did last week in Arrowhead, were they going to have a hangover against a very good football team coming in here? And, and they didn't. They came out from the very first snap, the very first drive, went right down the field, opened up a 21-point lead, and ultimately that was enough. Yeah, and we're talking about the Raiders coming in at 3-0, and and people are fired up in Las Vegas. A couple of overtime victories as well. What did you learn about them? now that they take their first loss of the season. Well, we know they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. We know that they have the kind of grit and the kind of makeup that John's been looking for in his four years now, you know, now in his fourth year, as far as the kind of players he's brought in here. They need to start fast, not have to always make it a, yes. something dramatic yeah, in the yeah. second half, but get on the gas early so the defense doesn't get worn out and so teams don't just run and don't start running the ball on you in the second half like the Chargers did tonight, and they'll be okay. The AFC West... Look, it's going to be a nice race this year. It's going to go all the way down to the wire. It's a really impressive division, but you're right. The Raiders, they keep playing from behind. They can't score a touchdown in the first quarter. Uh, the Raiders had zero yards of offense after the first quarter. Too big of a, a hill to climb out of. And uh, that's the story. The Chargers looking very good here in Los Angeles. All right, fellas. Well, uh, that certainly was fun. What a good card. Great card. For week four in the NFL. Yeah, outstanding card. You start to see some teams. We're through four games, so you start to see kind of what the teams may be. We'd like to say it's the quarterly report, but we're, you know, with 17 games. It's different. We're going to do fractions. <laughs> it's the <laughs> almost <laughs> quarterly report. We hope you're with us every week in NFL primetime. We do.